So we just arrived, or I just arrived at the location with Piccolo and we're back at this lake which is really pretty. Just started raining which is good because it's the kind of light we want, however it's not the best for obviously photographing product. But we have a bunch of bags we have to get photographed, I think there's about 15 so it's like a little bit stressful when you go to a place and you have so much stuff to photograph but at the same time it's really exciting because you have endless possibilities of shots that you could do. Um, what's really important for this shoot is that the product remains in focus of everything because it's a lookbook so <laughs> every single shot um, that we do has to be kind of centered around the bag obviously and that's something I struggle with a bit um, well I have in the past because I'd have these crazy ideas and then you get so caught up in the overall shot that you forget about the main product being the center of attention so yeah, I kind of have a shot idea right now. No one's here yet, and I, but I have a tripod in the back, so I might try and execute it. I could take one of the bags too, honey, and even the lantern and put it on the bow of that ship. Christian was trying to get a close up of a bag Ukraine. just for like um, backup shots. Let's see. Oh wow, you actually got it flying. <laughs> Wait, does it um. Without the glare, so. Oh, that's amazing. That's actually so amazing. These waiters were $80 at a local thrift store uh, close to the vintage. And I think that's pretty insane shooting flat lays. Um, probably one of the best things you can do for yourself is shooting on a wide angle lens. So for us, we're gonna shoot on a 24 millimeter on the Canon Mark IV 5D. This camera is awesome. I think they can come out with seven more bodies and they'll still have this one. It's kind of lame. I know, the lantern thing's a little bit overplayed. I don't care. It's good for that. Like this is a really old school Dietz lantern and it's cool to see it all together. And you might need some, even some more stuff in there. Really? Well, while we have um, no rain, we should grab this little photo. Good. I'm, I'm also from a distance. Yeah. And you don't want it to look like fakery stuff. No. I always hate that too. Like how much stuff am I really going to have yeah. in my backpack when I'm exactly. fly fishing? Maybe we just do what's good color-wise. Yeah. The yellows, the greens are nice. Maybe no blue. Maybe no blue. No they look good, LZ. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you want to update the firmware? No, I'm pretty sure I don't. I have to calibrate the compass for my thing. Okay. Hello. That's that's good enough. Hi. I just want Maccas. <laughs> Maccas, bro. That's what we need. That's really what Chris was saying on the canoe.
so this is our last and final location for the shoot. Um, we're gonna do a couple of shots on this bit of wood over here, which is our main flat lay table. I'll show you guys the color and everything. It's amazing. And just the light, we have one light source coming in from the window, well, like we have three windows, but just that directional light. And then the rest is dark, but it makes for a really good um, light source. And then I'm gonna do a couple of shots downstairs as well in front of just the concrete. Setting up a second flat lane. Spacing is really important, right? Yeah, and I'm not trying to show the name brands of anything too. So like if the pins uh, have like a logo on them or whatever, it's like I try not to show it so that it doesn't interfere with the direction of the brand that we're photographing for. Spacing is really important. For the harmony of the overall frame. Yeah, yeah, and just making sure like everything that fits kind of makes sense, like a little pocket knife, like a house key, you get your pencil sharpener, a thing that matches your watch. You know, what would you take in your bag? Yeah. And then, you know, conveying that for when the, the client sees the photograph, they're like, okay, cool. Like everything kind of makes sense, you know, together. A little bottle of perfume would be cool. I just need something because it's going to roll. So typically oh. what I'll do is I'll find like an eraser shaving or something. Or a matchstick. Or a matchstick. It's great. Like coming in right above us, which is awesome. For a little dog. Maybe a little bit richer on this shot because right now I'm shooting a little bit warm. I shoot in high speed continuous. So it's kind of a. We are doing the last shoot here in the office, and we're also doing a shot together here, probably in front of the concrete wall. I'll open up this so we have the natural light coming in. Looks like it's getting a little sunnier as well, which isn't the best thing for us because we want the overcast light to be basically like a soft box. So better get quick because I think the sun's coming out. I'm gonna style a few antique pieces, maybe give it some height, like me standing up, Christian sitting down, and we'll get a good clean shot of the bags. He's gonna be using this briefcase. Figuring out a feeling for a lookbook is really, really fun. For this shoot in particular, we were going for a more adventurous feeling for the... There was a number of bags that came in, I think all up, 15, give or take. We were actually really lucky in this situation. The brand sent us through a lookbook and they kind of showed us the feeling that they wanted from us and took a lot of our own photos and said, hey, we want this kind of feel for these bags and this kind of feel for these bags which I'll add in and show you guys what that looks like. Most of the time you don't have that direction. We try our best to live a life that actually reflects our inspiration. So we live and work in amongst antiques and that's the kind of thing that really gives us inspiration. However, if you don't really care to do that or you don't have the accessibility to those kinds of things, Pinterest is really, really good. Um, hello, Ellie speaking. Oh, hi, Eddie. Good, thank you. How are you? Amazing. Yeah, sure. My Christian will be really happy. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll text it through to you now. All right, see you soon. Bye. Christian! Yeah? Your dry cleaning's ready, and they're going to drop it off to us. What? Yeah, Eddie's coming down. Eddie? Yeah, from, um, oops, I just tried calling him again. I think he'll just pay when he drops it off. He'll probably have a card machine. Oh my gosh, we can do this now. I know. He's like, look, there's a lot of it, and I want it to stay in the, uh, pristine condition, so I'll, t I'll drive it to you. I'll show you guys. This is one of the camera bags that um, 
they have and it's incredible it's like as you can see inside it has many pockets for different lenses and cameras and all their bags are made in France beautiful leather we try and live amongst the feeling um, however there is a lot of inspiration through online but I think the best inspiration comes from reality and just your life so that's why I would say it's really important to kind of curate the feeling that you want to have for your work within your own lifestyle however Pinterest is really good Tumblr is really good I've had a Tumblr since I was actually I've had a Tumblr since I was around 17 and when I was around 19 I started following um, more artistic blogs or like art poetry literature and I think I came to realize that that stuff really inspired me within photography and I've said this before but often different art mediums can really inspire your artistic eye and the avenue that you're in. Having that variety of being able to understand or be inspired by different forms of art is really an amazing thing because it ignites so many different ideas that can be used throughout shoots or throughout whatever the art is that you're doing. And so all this to say Tumblr for me is like a really sacred place and I also share a lot of um, my own work there that I've, I really love and it's a place where I can kind of just curate that feeling that I know whenever I come back to it I'm really excited. For the actual styling of this shoot um, in preparation we kind of spent a good half of the, the day we were shooting, the first half of it just picking out pieces that we wanted to use as props so we got, you know, we got the canoe, we got ropes, we got little flasks and maps and things like that. And Blue Dishoff mentioned that they wanted overhead photographs too. So we understood that we had to get these pieces in order to convey the feeling that they wanted. And that was, it's just really helpful having a good day or half a day just to organize your stuff and get your head around exactly what you need to use, how you're going to use it and also to have just backup pieces. You kind of have this storyline in your head and we had to have clothing that didn't take away from the bag. So the key thing is just picking things that follow in with your storyline, but also don't take away attention from the product itself. So what I did and what Christian did, we just grabbed a couple of different jackets so we didn't have to fully change our outfits amongst the shoot because when you've got so many things to do, it can just be a hassle having to change hair and shoes. It wasn't very important for this lookbook to have completely different looks. So we got a couple different jackets to showcase different colors to complement the bags or textures to complement the bags on. And then of course for the indoor shoot, we dressed, I dressed in this actually, but we just wore more sophisticated clothes. Sophisticated. <laughs> not as adventurous as the first lot. And that was also because the brand wanted a separation between the fisherman bags with the fly fishing bags and then the other leather bags. So yeah, we made sure to kind of do that and have that difference. But all in all, if you can really immerse yourself into the shoot and just get excited about it, it's the funnest thing ever. And just allow yourself to spend a couple of days researching and saving saving images or compositions or like ways of shooting techniques that you really love that kind of stuff really pays off and often on Instagram like we'll always be switched on and even if it's like in oil paintings Christian and I will just like save a ton of different paintings that we see or come across that we know that on a later date or in another shoot we'll be able to look at the, those tagged photos and get immediately get like sparks of inspiration for new ideas and of course the purpose is never to copy you know I think it's important to mention that and keep that in mind the idea is for your yourself to create a way of thinking and a way of viewing things that is unique to you but we'll always be drawing inspiration from other people we can't help it and create something new with it and I think that's again the most exciting part of it that it's your mind and that your mind can do that and no one else's can.